Turn on that second cordless mic, please. Amen. Hallelujah, God. How many of you believe that God really is a chain breaker? He's still in the healing business. He's still able to break those chains. I know in my life I have been wrapped up so many times in a bunch of chains and I felt like, my God, I'm never going to get out. I've stumbled. I have backslid. I have totally turned away from God many times, not just once, but many times. I have been that prodigal daughter so many times that I thought, you know what? He's not going to love me. He's not going to forgive me this time, but he did because he loved me. He nailed my sins to the cross a long time ago. So no matter what I did, no matter what I, I went through, no matter what anybody said about me or whatever it was, God is all that matters is what God says about us. And he still today is a chain breaker. Amen. I love that song because it says there's an army rising up and how many knows I want to be a part of that army. I want to be a part of God's army, not the devil's army. I sure don't want a part of that. I want to be a part of God's army. And tonight I want to talk to you about worshiping through your circumstances. How many of you is able to actually worship through your circumstances? Sometimes we have circumstances where, you know what? We don't feel like worshiping. We don't want to do that. There's a lot of times we get so bogged down by the devil and his chains and his lies that we don't feel like worshiping. We get in that mode where we're like, you know what? I've worshiped enough. I've prayed enough. How come it's not here yet? But God's got a plan in every situation, every single thing. I thought, I thought Joe for a minute was going to walk all over my message. And I'm like, stop, just chill out just for a second. But he didn't walk all over it. Thank God. So did you know that your worship has the ability to change your circumstances? Did you know that? Your worship, not my worship, not Sister Meyer's worship. But your worship has the ability to change your circumstances. No matter what you're going through, all you got to do is lift your hands. The furthest the devil can ever get you is to your knees. And guess what happens when you're on your knees? You get stronger. You get more power in you through the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes down, the fire from heaven comes down. The Shekinah glory comes down over your situation, over your circumstances. And you know what happens? Change happens. The environment begins to change. The atmosphere begins to change. So you Your worship begins to change your atmosphere. Your worship begins to change your circumstances. You got to have that kind of worship that says, you know what? It's a breakthrough kind of worship that whenever you want to, whenever you want to break through to come out, you have the ability to get that. You have to worship to get there. Worship in the worst of your circumstances, worship in the worst of your times. And, and the, whenever you got people around you all over the place. That'll sit there and put more on you and more on you and more on you. You're a Christian. You should be able to handle that. You're a Christian. You should be able to be stronger than that. Shouldn't you be over here in your worst of times telling somebody else how, how they should be doing better? Shouldn't you be able to pick them up? Shouldn't you be able to encourage somebody? No, wait a minute. I'm a human too. I'm human too. I make mistakes too. And sometimes I need a little encouragement, but folks, just like he was saying earlier, sometimes we got to learn to encourage ourselves. Amen. Sometimes there ain't always going to be brother Meyer, sister Meyer, sister Tracy Branson to say, Hey girl, I'm messed up right now. I need you to pray for me. Sometimes you're not going to have that. And one of these days in the latter days, one of these days, you won't have anybody to pray for you. You won't have that. You're going to have to learn to worship. You're going to have to learn to press forward, press through. You're going to have to learn to let the Holy Ghost take over and take over you and begin to break every single chain that's off of you. How many knows that the anointing is what breaks the yoke of bondage? When the anointing falls down, what happens? It breaks every chain that's got a hold of you. I don't know what's going on with anybody tonight. I don't know any stories. I don't need to know any stories. But I know that this message is for somebody because God gave it to me for a reason. Somebody in here has got bondage. I do. I'm not the only one in this house that's got bondage. I have something, and I'm waiting for God to pull it down. I've got to get my breakthrough worship coming through. And so do you. That's the only way you're going to get out of that. You may have a drug addicted family member. You got a kid that's just went off the deep end. You don't know what to do about it. Maybe your husband's not in church. I got plenty of ladies at my church. Their husbands don't come with them. 
but they come anyway. Why? Because they're the pillar of that household. Sometimes you have to be the one. You've got to be the pillar to say, you know what? As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And when you do that, God honors that. It may not come today. It may not come this year. But be known that God will give you the desires of your heart when you live an uprighteous life. God will give you that. Amen. So tonight my text is in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 and 1, and it's in the Bible says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. That means he lived in a cemetery, y'all. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. That means shackles and chains. Big we laughing at me. And the, <clears throat> and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Have you ever seen somebody you just couldn't tame? They just crazy, flat crazy on pills, everything else. You can't do nothing about it. People that are got, they're drug addicted. You can't do nothing about them, right? And always night and day, he was in the mountains. So that means that one part of his time of his life, he was on the high part of his life. He was doing good. But then it also says, where was I at? That he was in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones, cutting himself with stones. Don't you see depression there? How many of us have dealt with depression before? Amen. Oppression. Yes. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion for we are are many. We are many. So when Jesus asked him to come out of the man, when he's, when that man ran to him, the man wanted to run to Jesus. He wanted deliverance. He wanted something, but you know what? The demons had to obey God. They had to go to him. They didn't worship Jesus that day, but they fell to him because they knew that he was overpowering over them. And they were afraid. They knew their judgment. The demons knew their judgment. He, they said, please don't send us away out of the country. They saw, if you lead, uh, read later on in the story, it says that there were some swine about, I think it was 2000 swine that were on the mountaintop, right? So he, he asked Jesus, the legion asked Jesus, he said, send us away into the swine. Don't send us out of the country for they knew their ju- Well, but judgment wasn't yet. It hasn't come yet, but they knew what their end result was going to be. So they asked that he would just have mercy and send them into the swine. They went into the swine and the swine ended up drowning them anyways. So in this story, I saw a lot of things with this man. One, he lived in a cemetery. He was in a lonely place. Nobody came by to visit him. Nobody wanted anything to do with this man. He had things wrong with him. He had, in the Bible, what it's, when it says that there's a legion, if you look back, um, if you do some research back in the Roman, uh, the Roman soldiers back in the day, in the Bible day, um, they would call their army a legion. And that was anywhere from three to 6,000 soldiers. So that meant that this man had anywhere from three to 6,000 demons attacking him. My word. Can you imagine? Why do you even think that he had that many demons attack him? He had something inside of him that they didn't want to come out. He had something inside of him that God could use, but they didn't want to come out. So the enemy placed him in, in a place that was, he was just wall to wall in a, in a cemetery. He's with the dead. He's living among the dead in a cemetery by himself. And it says that he cut himself with stones. He was, ter- he was, he was tortured by these things. And, but when people did come by to see him, 
they would just put more baggage on top of him. That's all they did do. When they did come by, they didn't come by to say, hey, brother, how you doing? I see you're doing pretty bad. What can I do for you? Can I pray for you? No, they didn't do that. They put more baggage on him, made fun of him, said things that weren't good to him. What do people do when they come to a cemetery? They come to mourn. They mourn. Think about that. He had absolutely no encouragement at all. And so the Bible says that he was on the mountaintops and then he was in the tomb. So that means this man was in a good place in his life, but at another time he was in the tombs in his life. That's just like us today. Sometimes we can be living for the Lord. We're going to church and we're, we've got the Holy ghost and we're coming all the time, but it, little by little, little by little, the enemy will give us a, an excuse not to go an excuse not to serve God. You don't have time to pray today. You ain't got time to do none of that. And then next thing you know, you're out of church. Next thing you know, the devil's got a hold of you. You're thinking about things you shouldn't be thinking about. You're watching movies you shouldn't be watching. All of a sudden, you're not where you were with the Lord. All of a sudden. It can happen to any one of us. You're not too Christian enough. You're not Christian enough. None of us are holier than thou that this can't happen. Just not happening. But the one thing that I did want to focus on about, about this message with this man is that um, it doesn't matter how bad you think that you've sinned, what you've done, where you've been, who you've talked to, none of your circumstances exactly. It doesn't matter what's in your life. It doesn't matter how long you've been away from the Lord. Once you become that prodigal son and you run to Jesus and you worship at his feet and you ask for forgiveness, that's all it takes. He knows your heart. He knows everything about you. That is it. That's all it takes. It's really not that hard. It's not that hard at all. What I found so interesting about this story is right before Jesus talks about this man that was he was demonized. He was possessed. He was a maniac is what the Bible calls him. He says he was a maniac. But right before that, Jesus calms a storm. But right before that, Jesus is in front of the multitude, a multitude of people, a multitude, like thousands. And he's preaching and he's teaching on these parables to these people. Well, finally he gets done talking to them and he says, you know what? We got to go. He had another plan. There was somebody else on the other side that he needed to touch. How many knows that when one leaves the fold, one, he'll leave that 99 to go and get the other one. So whoever you're praying for, that's not saved, that used to be saved, or whoever you're praying for that is bogged down and they need deliverance and they've got nothing but bad things in their life, whether it be depression, oppression, whether it be lust of the flesh, whether it be addiction, whatever it is, whoever you're praying for, God's got a plan and he will cross that, that sea, that ocean, that storm, that's all over the place. He'll get in that storm, cross over it to get that one. So what happened was, is he gets done preaching to the multitudes. All right. So, and he gets in this storm. The devil meant something bad when this storm was coming. He wanted to sink that ship. That's what he wanted to do. His disciples were freaking out. They were scared. And he said, where's your faith? He was just sleeping. You think Jesus was scared? Mm -mm. He wasn't scared a bit. He knew what, what, the, what the plan was. These disciples got scared. I'm going to tell you right now, I'd have been scared too. First of all, I'm not the person that loves boats. My husband can tell you I cannot stand it. I like them sometimes, but I get enough after once a month or something. But I would have been scared too. We're out here in the ocean, and this storm represents your circumstances in your life. But when God says stop, when God says cease, your storm will cease. So he crossed over this storm to get to this one man. He saw something in this one man he didn't see in one of those people in the multitudes on the other side. Not one. So he crossed this sea and he gets to him. And he's just right there. But this man saw him, he says, from afar off. So he may have been in sin, but he knew Jesus. He knew what God could do for him. He knew that he could be delivered. So he ran. 
That's what we have to do. We have to know who Jesus Christ is in us and run to him when we're in trouble. Run to him when your husband's in trouble or your friend's in trouble or your family member's in trouble. I've got many family members, Joe can tell you, Lord, we've got many family members that's in deep, deep trouble. And if they don't give their life to God, they're going to be in more trouble. You got to keep praying and know that God's got a plan. God will leave that 99 for that one that you're praying for. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you that's bound up in chains and shackles and bondage. You don't have to be. Today, you can get freedom like this man did. You don't have to be in bondage. It doesn't have to be that way. God never set that out for us. Makes me think of the story of Paul and Silas. Actually, besides Jesus in the Bible, Paul and Silas, they're my favorite. Why? Because Saul, Paul, he had a true change. He went from Saul to Paul. He truly went from demonic to Christian. I mean, and I'm not talking just like, yeah, I'm a Christian, y'all. I read my Bible sometimes. No, he followed Christ. He got beaten. He got thrown in jail and he didn't stop. That's who we need to be. But it reminds me when Paul and Silas got thrown into the jail, they didn't get thrown just in a part of it where they could see out the windows. They went to the innermost part of the jail. They were shackled up in the fetters and the chains They couldn't see outside, couldn't see inside. And if they're shackled up, they can't even go to the bathroom. Can you imagine what they went through? But they decided to worship. And when they got down and they started worshiping God, when they really, truly from their heart, they knew their circumstances, but they didn't let their circumstances hinder their worship with God because they knew that God could do something. They knew the power of the Lord. They had been with the Lord. They've been walking with God. So if you're walking with God and you're praying, if you're reading the word of God, it's feeding your spirit. Which spirit man are you feeding? You feeding the worldly son? Or are you feeding the spirit man? Which one? Because that's the only way you're going to make it. That's the only way you're going to get your true deliverance. That's it. That's, That's the only way. So when they began to sing praises unto the Lord, an earthquake came. An earthquake. I mean, my God, he could have just been like, you're free. No, he caused a commotion. He caused something to shake the very foundations of that place and say, listen, I am the one true king and you're not going to hold up my people. You're not going to do it. Enough's enough. And God will get to that point in your circumstance when you are praising God where enough is enough. And he's going to deliver you from each and everything that you deal with. Everything. What kind of worship do you have? Is it a breakthrough worship or is it, thank you, Jesus, for waking me up this morning. I'm so happy. Amen. Is that it? Or are you really, truly giving everything you got and saying, God, I can't do this without you. God, this one's lost. I know you got a plan and I give them to you, Lord. Do what you've got to do, but save them, God. What kind of worship do we have? What are we living by? Thinking about this man again that was bound up. He's not only bound up by these demons. He's bound up by people and their words, their things. How many of you have wanted to do something for the Lord so bad? You want to be used by God, but you don't feel like you're qualified. You don't feel like you're good enough. This man didn't feel good enough. He was a loner, cutting himself, depressed. He's all messed up. He's got three to 6,000 demons. He didn't feel like he was anybody. He can't work for the Lord. Well, who is he? Who am I? When you have Jesus, that's the only time you're anything. Because the Bible says even on our best days, we're nothing but filthy rags. That's any of us. But with Christ, we are everything. Every single thing. Each and every one of you are called for a purpose. Each and every one of you, your household can be and will be saved because you have that faith, because you have that worship, because you have that praise, no matter what you go through, that God will deliver and God has a plan. Think about it. 
You can change your circumstances with your worship and your praise and your faith. What kind of worship do you have? Think about that. So when this man was by himself, that's the other thing I was telling you. He wanted to do something for the Lord. But these people came by all the time, making him feel bad. He ain't good enough. How many of you have said, you know what? Maybe you've told a friend, I want to be a preacher one day. I think God's called me to be a preacher. It's really in me. Or I want to, I want to learn how to play that piano right there, you know? I'm struggling, but I have a desire to play that piano. I have a desire to read God's word and understand it. And when you tell your friends, say, hey, you know, I've got this desire. And they say, what? Why do you want to do that? Those kinds of things can make you back up and, and look at your own self and say, you know, I'm not called to do that, I guess. I'm not good enough for that. I'm not equipped for that. Well, let me tell you something. Wasn't it Moses who had a lisp and he was afraid to go speak? He was afraid to go do things, but God equipped him to do what he needed to do. God will do the same thing for you. Exact same thing. So when Jesus came out to this man... Full of the devil, this man was, not Jesus. He was, this man was full of the devil, but he ran to him. He knew Jesus. That lets me know that each and every person out here knows who God is. We are created in his image. We may have been born into a sinful place, but we have been made into God's image enough to where we know what God is and who God is. We know that. So Jesus heals this man of his legion. The many, many demons. He healed him totally of these demons. And he was totally set free. He didn't go back. You know what? Matter of fact, what he wanted to do is he wanted to go with Jesus and be a disciple. He wanted to go on that boat and go with him. But Jesus said, no, I want you to stay here. And I want you to go tell everybody what, what the Lord has done for you. But the one thing that sticks out also in this... Um, in this scripture about this story is um, whenever people heard about this man being delivered, they came to see. And when they saw that he was in his right mind, because they knew how he was, they'd seen him for years. This man is a maniac. But when they saw that he was totally delivered, he was totally healed in his mind. He no longer had the devils in him. They were scared. Let me tell you something. When you give your life to God and you begin to have an anointing, people are going to be afraid. They're going to try to come against you. The spirit of jealousy is going to come all over them. And they're going to try to steal your anointing because that's something that they want. They don't want you to be anointed. They don't want any of that because they're afraid that you're going to get the limelight or whatever that is. I've had that happen to me. But you know what? You've got to get in that place of your mind where... It does not matter what anybody says. I'm going to have my breakthrough. I'm done breaking down. I'm tired of breaking down and letting the devil have everything inside of me. I'm tired of the devil telling me lies. My daughter, my son's never going to be this. My husband's never going to be that. I'm never going to have anything. This aunt or uncle that I got is never going to get delivered. I'm never going to have that financial status that I need to have just to survive. It's a lie. God has a plan for each and every one of us. We cannot allow the enemy to pull us down and pull us back anymore. Like I said in the beginning, the lowest you can go is to your knees, and then it's up to you what you do with it. It's up to you whether you pray or you go get on your phone. Oh, how many of us get on our phones for hours, but when we get to go pray to God, we're all of a sudden tired? Tired. Why do you think that is? It's the devil. He don't want you praying because he knows when you pray, you get stronger. He don't want you praising because he knows when you do, you get stronger. Chains begin to break. Chains begin to fall. People get delivered. But it's still up to you. The devil wants to destroy us because of our relationship with God. Just as this lesion did... This man, he's afraid of what God has for us to do. <clears throat> I need to stop going to my notes because it's messing me up. But anyways, don't allow excuses to come in your life. 
Don't allow the enemy to give you another excuse not to come to the house of God. I want to tell y'all one thing. If you go right now around the world, I kind of dare you. Go to different churches. See if the Holy Ghost sits in those churches. Y'all are blessed that you have a church that's filled with the Holy Ghost and you got pastors that are here for you all the time. We don't have that everywhere. That's not everywhere to be found. There's a, this church right here, the Holy Ghost, I know sits here because I've been here before and times before. This is a place of refuge. This is a place where you can get your breakthrough. This is a place where you can get deliverance. But how bad do you want it? How much do you want to see things happen in your life? How much do you want to change? How much do you need a change? Are you just going to come in every single day the same way like this man did? He came up in his place, sat there in the, in the graveyard just sitting. What was he waiting for? You can't do nothing by sitting. You can't get anything by waiting. God's not just going to be like, hey, here you go. I know you need that, so here you go. No, you have to do something. Start praising in the worst of your circumstances. Praise God. Get your worship on. And he's going to come down and he'll, he'll break every single chain that's in your life. He'll change the atmosphere. You have that ability. And that's just the one thing I want to get across to each and every one of you. I'm no kind of a preacher person, but God really stirred in my heart that in order for a change, we have to get a different kind of worship together. In order for our country to change, we got to do something about it. We got to start praying about it instead of complaining about it. Start doing something about it. Start worshiping God and telling him, Lord Jesus, you've got to take over. Stop worrying about your circumstance. Praise God for your answers that are coming. Thank him for the deliverance that's coming. God's got a plan in every single situation, just like this man that was alone in a cemetery in a very dark, dark place. The Bible says if he has to reach way down, he will pick you up. He will. It doesn't matter where you are in your walk with God. If you're not even running with God, walking with God, nothing. If you don't speak his name ever or your family members don't speak their, his name it doesn't matter where you are in your walk or what you've ever done. God will reach down, pick you up, turn you around, put you back on the potter's wheel, re begin to remold, remake you into what he wants you to be. Be that vessel that God needs you to be. He's got a plan for your life. He's got something for you to do, each and every single one of us. If he didn't, he wouldn't have done what he did. He wouldn't have nailed our sins to the cross. He did that for us. He had a plan for this man's life. So I know if he's got a plan for a man's life that's got 3,000 demons or 6,000 demons, he sure enough got something for me because that man did a lot of wrong. So he's got a plan for each and every one of you. It's just how bad do you want it? How bad do you want God? Where's your worship today? Is your worship just like I said, thanks God for waking me up and you move on? Or do you truly get in the word? Do you truly feed off of what God has given us? I'm going to tell you something. There's going to come a day that you will not be able to have your Bible in front of you. You better have it written on the table of your heart. You better be reading the word of God. Because there's going to come a day when you're not going to be able to flip through them pages and get your answers. You got to have it here. We got to be strengthened. There's going to come a time when we're going to have to have the presence of the Holy Ghost to strengthen us for what we're going to go through. But just like he calmed the seas and the storm and he went to this other man, he went clear across the other country. It says they were countries. He went clear across the other side. He's going to be there for each and every one of us. Just keep praying. Keep worshiping. Because God's got a plan for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't you believe that tonight? Amen.
she was talking there and about several different things, and a scripture came back to my mind. There several messages that I preached here recently. She mentioned things that uh, came back to my mind. I hadn't long preached about when God says it's over. Some of you may have heard that, and I heard her mention something about that. And I believe that there comes a time whenever God says that's enough. The enemy's had enough fun. But she had mentioned several times about worshiping, you know, getting to the place where that you have get down to rock bottom and you start worshiping God. And I preached about this fellow here recently, but this scripture came back to me, and I wanted to read you a verse out of it. How many remembers the tragic story of Job? What a terrible story. But it was good in the fact that he prevailed. But I want to read you what the Bible said. After all the different things that had happened to Job, and he had found out that he lost several things, he's lost children, he's lost cattle, lost his farm, he's lost everything, he has nothing. He's left with nothing but his integrity and his wife. Uh, and that wasn't saying a whole lot, but this is what it said. As it, as it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent, a, sent and sanctified rose up in the morning, and he offers burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said it may be that his sons and whatnot had sinned. Uh, goes on, I guess my, my uh, thing it may have jumped here. I want to read you here. There's a verse I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for after all the damage had occurred. The Bible said in verse 20 of chapter 1, Then Job arose and rent his mantle. He shaved his head and he fell down upon the ground and he worshiped. I was telling somebody the other day, the, the lady I was telling you that is going through the divorce, I was in, trying to encourage her. And I used the story of Job. And whenever we were at Mayaka, I was pastoring there. And we went through a very difficult time. And uh, we lost a lot of church folks through some different difficulties and things. And um, I got down to a very, very depressed kind of place, ministry. And I started asking God to help me. And, and the Lord had given me a message. And I preached a message that I probably will never forget. But I preached on there's still a fighter in the ashes. And um, I got up that night and I preached so hard. I didn't know this till later. I thought maybe I was having a heart attack. I was having severe chest pains for a couple weeks after that. And for about two years, it took for it to finally heal. But I figured this out whenever I was at the doctor that just, I preached so hard that night that I had ruptured the cartilage in my rib cage. But I remember preaching that message and some of the things about that God had showed me. Job lived his life, had all the possessions and all the assets and all the things because he was a good man, righteous man, and God blessed his household. Well, whenever the enemy come against Job, everything he has is destroyed. And the Bible shows us that he sat down in a pile of ashes. And, you know, I got to thinking about doing some studying back then. And you know, the truth is, there is no value in ashes. I've never seen, now there's some weird folks out there now, but I've never seen anybody put ashes in a picture frame. I've seen ashes on a coffee table, but it was because it was somebody's ashes. But I've never seen anybody decorate a house with ashes. You know why? Because ashes have absolutely no value. So Job is sitting in, the, in, in a pile of everything that was, everything he ever owned. Just like that, it's reduced to ashes. But do you know what? In the midst of all of that, there was still a fighter in that pile of ashes. And Job says, yea, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Yet will I trust him. And I read to you what the Bible said he did. Can you imagine losing everything you got and your wife says, just curse God and die, but you fall down on your face and you start worshiping God? Now you know the reason why Job made it out when it was over with. God made his friends apologize for accusing him of it might be his fault, and he gave Job twice what he had before. Because just what she preached tonight to us is that you have to learn how that in the most difficult times to find a way to fall down and worship him Anyhow, in spite of it, stand to your feet tonight. We're going to give you an opportunity if you'd like to come down. And Amanda's going to play something tonight on the piano. We're going to give you an opportunity to pray.